Hello and welcome to another episode of My Southern Exposure. I'm Joseph Manuel Lovello, your host here in beautiful South Florida. And I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who is helping with the show today. We have some great scheduled guests. We have a wonderful sponsor also as well. And we have a couple of wonderful people doing production also. Uh, I want to also thank all of you at home for watching. This is our very first live event. So I hope that you will forgive anything that doesn't go off exactly as planned or scheduled, but it is a live show. Everyone on YouTube and Facebook, thank you for following. Thank you to our over 43,000 total views since our show started just 10 weeks ago, technically 11 weeks ago. We've now had over 7,000 views a week for two weeks in a row. And my little story for the week is Hurricane Isaiah. Um, basically spent the last two or three days trying to plan for a quick moving storm. The house is still shuttered up. The good thing is that it didn't hit myself or my dear friend Raji as we planned or thought that it would. So that's the blessing uh, that happened for us. But unfortunately, it did a lot of damage to the Dominican Republic, the Caribbean, and also Puerto Rico with mudslides. I don't have any of the information, the specifics yet. Numbers are still coming in. So I do want to say that we were lucky, but some others were not. That's my story. And I'm going to pass it over to Raji. Raji, how are you and how has your week been so far? Oh, well, I'm doing fantastic. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another week of Southern Exposure, honey. And it's going to be a great show. I'm really excited about tonight. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to, because you all know me with this whole pandemic thing going on, like lately I've really been doing like a lot of Netflix and that sort of thing. This week I saw on Netflix and I just want to like make a suggestion to our viewers. It's called Indian matchmaking. And you know, it was on my radar because, you know, I am half Indian. My father is of South Asian descent from Trinidad. And so I know growing up in my family, like, you know, some of my family members were like, they had arranged marriages and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, so it was on my radar, but I think anyone, no matter what your background is, will get a kick out of it because it was just so good. They featured like, uh, I would say, I think it was about seven or eight people that were looking to be matched with a partner and really interesting. A lot of the, um, they did like interviews with some of like uh, couples that have been together for years, like 30, 40, 50 years who were arranged marriage and how it even worked out. You know, like, cause think about it. You know, me, like you're the bride and you're showing up and you maybe only met your husband like once or twice. But, you know, amazingly, a lot of these marriages, they work. So anyway, just that's just a little um, suggestion if you all are looking for something to watch on Netflix. And um, I got my topics this week. I want to give... Uh, tribute and pay honor to John Lewis, uh, who just passed away, great civil rights leader. And so I'll speak about that. And of course, we're going to do um, a little bit of a trans update for you. So on that note, what's going on with Mickey? Hi, guys. Uh, this is exciting. It being our very first live show. Uh, I hope you guys are all tuned in and you're enjoying yourself so far and that it's going off without a hitch. Uh, my week has been largely the same as most weeks have been in quarantine. It's a lot of staying home, doing work from home, uh, just getting things done from home. Um, in the past week, I guess maybe the most eventful things that I have sort of been up to, uh, I went to another protest yesterday. Um, this one was actually at the mayor's house here in Los Angeles, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti. He has come under fire for many, many, many different things uh, during his tenure as mayor. But one thing that uh, Angelinos are really paying attention to right now is rent as the $600 uh, unemployment uh, benefit is now not really going it, like the future of it remains uncertain. Uh, and as 
COVID cases go up and as people continue to be out of work, uh, there is currently an eviction moratorium in place here in Los Angeles, but that is set to expire. And so we went to the mayor's house to tell him that we think that that's ridiculous during a quarantine to be at asking people to pay uh, for rent uh, with money that they don't have because people have to pay for food, they have to pay for their children, they have to pay for their health. And if you don't have a job right now and your unemployment benefits have run out or they've just been drastically cut in half uh, or by a third, however much it is, um, you probably aren't able to pay for your rent and housing is a human right. That isn't something that I'm willing to debate with anyone. That's just kind of a fact of the matter. Uh, so going off of that, that was what brought us to the mayor's house yesterday. We were in front of his house. At one point we blocked off one of the major streets here in Los Angeles. It's called Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, and it was overall, I think a relatively successful protest. We did not see the mayor at all, but like I said, we stopped traffic on the street. We got a really great response from the people who were, who were driving by. Uh, the cops were not super pleased with us, but I am not surprised by that because they are part of the problem. Uh, but basically what I would like people to pay attention to is that <clears throat> eviction moratoriums across many cities uh, across the country are being lifted. And that's going to result in hundreds of thousands of people being possibly made homeless. In California alone, estimates say that in the coming months, up to 400,000 Californians could become homeless. At the very least, they're predicting that 150 will be 150,000 will be homeless uh, if trends continue the way that they do. So cancel rent uh, and cancel evictions for the time being because we're in a pandemic. But if you have any questions for me or you want to reach out to me about any of this sort of stuff, my email is at mick at mysouthernexposure.site. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Joseph and get the show started. Joseph. Thank you so much, Mick. Thank you so much, Raji. Uh, basically, there's a lot of information to go over with the show. I thought that what Raji brought up at the end of last week's show was a bit ironic because we were talking about water shortages in the United States being in the millions, mostly in Indian reservations, which she brought up that topic uh, on her own. And unbeknownst to her, I was talking with a water purification system company, which we will be showcasing uh, as our sponsor uh, shortly, but I think it's pretty interesting that 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 you brought up that topic, and it also ties in with a lot of what's happening in the United States right now with shortages. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's I a little strange. It's a little strange because uh, there's a lot of different shortages from helium. I know it sounds obs obscure or strange, but from helium to to copper and water, um, food shortages. There's a lot of different shortages that are going on and just something as simple as energy, different ways to think about how to harness energy and save it and store it safely without negatively impacting our environment. We've talked about the environment before on the show, uh, but this is a little bit more in depth because we have a great product that we're all gonna learn about. And at the end of this presentation, uh, in sponsorship, we will have a couple of minutes for Q and A, and I'm certain because of Mick the way that you are, and Raji the way that you are, each of us are going to probably have at least one question. So uh, that's basically the uh, show in a nutshell, and then we're going to have our regular uh, 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 segments that we have also as well. So. We have Raji with her segment, and Mick with his segment, myself with my segment, and a wonderful, delectable delight from La. And Carlita yeah. is on camera in studio in, in Ohio. So it's going to be a fabulous show. It's going to be a fabulous show. So uh, I think what we should probably do is get right to it. Because from what I can see... There's a very handsome man down there in the corner ready to talk. His name 
is Chris Cipriano. He is a representative entrepreneur, distributor, pretty much the all around perfect man in a nutshell, enagic.com. And he's going to be talking about Canjan water. Uh, Chris, are you there? Hey, uh, what's going on, everybody? Nice to be wow. on. Thank you guys so much for having me here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Joe, is it? So, uh, Chris, tell us about tell us about about your product and exactly why people need to know about Canjan Water and Enagic.com as well. I, um, well, I guess before I get into it, uh, introduce myself uh, to everybody on here watching. Um, Chris Cipriano, I'm an entrepreneur and a Kenyan water educator and advocate. Uh, I've learned about this water, I've uh, been drinking it myself now for four years. And um, when I first saw my you know, very first demonstration, uh, for those of you who don't know what it is, um, really life-changing water. Uh, and when I saw my first demonstration, I knew right away that this was something uh, special. It was something that would help people. And um, it's, uh, you know, so once I knew that it could help people, I got involved with the company uh, and, and just sharing it with others. It's actually been around for a really long time. Uh, our company, Enagic, has been around since 1974. Um, over uh, 46 years it's been around, uh, almost half a century. You know, and still so many people don't know about it, which is, uh, which is crazy. Um, it uh, originated in Japan and uh, um, it came into the United States in 2003. Uh, so it has been here in the States for quite some time. Um, and this, uh, this movement, you know, with the company, uh, we have tons of seminars, educational uh, gatherings and get togethers. Unfortunately, now with COVID going on, uh, we've switched on to doing webinars and uh, uh, of you know, online presentations to showing people what this is all about. Uh, but this is a, a completely global movement where people are learning about this machine, learning about this water and, uh, and how to apply it to their life, uh, to better their life. You know, water is so important. So, um, you know, no matter where you are in the world, it's a complete global company. Um, we have, we actually just opened up an office in India in 2016. Uh, we have offices pretty much all over the world. Um, I think it's uh, 46 uh, offices in over maybe 20 countries. I think that's what the numbers are, but pretty much wherever you are, uh, we could get you a machine and service you, you know, that way you could get this water and start drinking it. And um, the reason why we've grown so, uh, so large uh, the past like 46 years as a company, uh, we're solving major problems. Um, plastic pollution is a huge global problem. Uh, plastic water bottles, single-use plastics, they cause so much pollution, uh, causes a lot of havoc in the world. Um, this, you know, it's bad for us and it's bad for the planet, right? Um, and uh, another uh, thing that we're solving, um, another issue is we live in such a toxic world, you know, with the foods we eat, they're full of so many different chemicals, GMOs and things like that. Um, this, you know, sports drinks, the sodas, uh, we all know all that stuff is bad for us, but, um, the bottled water itself, we're learning, uh, tons about bottled water. Um, I've learned a ton about bottled water since my involvement with the company. Uh, certain bottles are even banned in other countries. Uh, the Sani and Aquafina aren't sold in Europe. Um, there's tons of chemicals and ingredients in bottled water. Why does my water have a label with ingredients in it? You know, so I, I've learned personally a lot of different things when it comes to water. And, uh, and the major thing also is, is the plastic. There's tons of microplastics that are in our bottled water. About 90% of bottled water has microplastics in it. Um, so not only is it bad for the ocean, but it's bad for us. You know, so... It's, uh, it's something to think about. 
And um, as a, as a product, um, the the reason why this is so beneficial, um, if I could put it in in a you know in a simple terms or just because uh, there's so much to talk about, um, it's this one simple fact that disease can't thrive in an alkaline environment. Um, so what Kangen water is actually, it's water loaded with natural alkaline minerals. Uh, that's what Kangen water is. Our Kangen water machines take regular tap water and turn it into a water with natural alkalized minerals. And since disease can't thrive in an alkaline environment, uh, that's a clue. That's something that we could, um, you know, look at. And, uh, and apply it to our life. And the best way to create an alkaline environment in the body is, is with this type of water, because we're 70% we're water. You know, so drinking alkalized water is gonna be able to do that. And um, uh, Kangen is really different from, let's say bottled alkaline waters you may be seeing on the stores or the shelves or um, things like that. There's no chemicals in Kangen water. Uh, what makes Kangen water an alkalized water, um, it's a, a very potent and strong antioxidant created in the water called molecular hydrogen. And uh, molecular hydrogen, it's been proven by scientists. There's tons of articles and research on it. Uh, it's the most potent uh, antioxidant we could consume. Uh, it's just like making a fresh green juice. You know, when you create the water fresh, it has all of these living antioxidants and we get to drink it and consume it every day. Um, so it's absolutely amazing to have this machine, drink it. I've been able to help tons of people with the machine. Um, we have uh, a couple of different models uh, for the house that you could get. I recommend uh, three different models. You know, you could finance the machines with credit or um, you know, a credit card or a debit card. Um, with the company, we actually have a no credit check payment plan. So it allows everybody to get approved uh, for the machine. You know, um, you just put a little bit down and then monthly payments and, uh, and then you have your machine, you're able to drink the water. Um, and some of you may be looking at the prices and think like, whoa, this is crazy. This, this is like uh, a lot, you know, two, $3,000 for a machine. Uh, I just want to put, uh, give you guys some perspective. Um, I read an article by Harvard talking about bottled water cost. And in the article, the person had uh, said that one person, uh, if you were to buy a $20, bottle, uh, $20 bottle, like a stainless steel bottle and refill it with water over a span of five years, that person could save over $6,000. Uh, and that's just one person instead of buying bottled water. So now imagine an entire family of, let's say, five. That's that's a lot of money uh, as a family that you could be saving. Um, so not only saving, but you're even drinking a healthier water. That's going to help you live a healthier lifestyle, um, a lifestyle of prevention instead of prescri uh, prescription. That's what I like to say, prevention over prescription. Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of taking, you know, the U.S. way of doing things is popping a pill and solving, you know, thinking it's going to take care of you. It's just a Band-Aid for the problem. You know, we got to take care of our health from uh, from the root, you know. Um, so that's what this is all about, guys. Um, there's a lot to talk about about this machine, um, how to order a machine or just learn more about it. You could go to Instagram at Kangen Water Machines. Uh, Kangen underscore water underscore machines uh, on Instagram. And uh, I'm going to do something special for everybody here with my, uh, uh, with everybody here with the show. Um, everybody who messages me, you know, just follow the page and then send us a message uh, letting us know that you're here from the show and uh, you'll qualify for a free filter as well with your machine. Um, so I'm excited to, uh, to speak with you guys, you know, talk to you more about this and, uh, Joe, I guess I'll give it, you know, give it back to you. If you guys have any questions, uh, uh, pick my brain a little bit. <laughs> you got, you have three people with tons of questions, at least I would guarantee. <laughs> um, and if anyone at home 
is watching the show on YouTube or Facebook because this is our very first live event, please communicate with me. Some of you have my phone number directly. You can text message me and I will read your question live on the air. Uh, and if it's possible, I will try to see what I can uh, answer. There's a lot of information like you just mentioned, but I think something that that is really important that you mentioned so many good things is, I don't know which one to start with first. So um, you mentioned Dasani and Aquafina being banned in Europe and where? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly the locations, but I do okay. know that they're banned in other countries. Okay. And that's, uh, let's move on to the next thing that you might know a, a better, have a better response for specifically, because I'm very nuts and bolts. Everyone knows this. I think that um, it's interesting I, that, I that, talk about, that the percentage, okay, go. Uh, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Just because you mentioned Dasani, I, I could just mention this one other thing about Dasani. Um, yeah. uh, if you look in Dasani in the ingredients, uh, it has a chemical called potassium chloride. And potassium chloride is one of three things used in a lethal injection. And in a lethal injection, it's, uh, it's part of that to dehydrate the heart, to basically stop the heart from beating. So they're putting basically salt in water so it would dehydrate you. Um, and then you'd want more water. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So I know Raji's burnt, but now you just at, you brought up some more things that I think are really important because it's ironic. I think that 70% of the, the planet earth is covered in water. And you mentioned that 70% of our body is consistent of water. So I think there's a very good emulation or, or blueprint or a plan that the planet is very similar to a person and that we need to treat the planet in respect, just like we do our body. Myself and my partner have been drinking alkaline water for years. Um, and my question for you about that is, I'm gonna do the cost analysis and all that and figure it out. But um, uh, the water that I'm buying that's alkaline water on the shelves in plastic bottles, is that safe or is it not safe? I know so cost is, part but then the safety is the other part yeah so um well first i could say kangen water um scientifically uh the term for it is actually called erw uh which is electrolyzed reduced water um a lot of people call it alkaline water um you know because it has alkaline properties um but it's technically not alkaline water um, so the major difference, just to discuss that, uh, bottled alkaline water in stores, it's made alkaline with adding, let's say, uh, different minerals or chemicals or things like that to the water. Um, a lot of the bottled alkaline water has uh, sodium bicarbonate in it, which is also like baking soda, which is like adding baking soda to your water. Um, Kangen water, on the other hand, what gives it that alkaline property, uh, like I'd mentioned, it's that antioxidant, uh, molecular hydrogen. So it's a difference of having a living water, which is naturally alkaline, compared to a water that's just made alkaline uh, with chemicals in it or just adding things to it. All right, I'm going to stop asking. I know Raji's writing stuff down. Raji or Mick, whichever one of you want to ask the next question, he can come back to me. Well, no, I just wanted to say, like, first of all, thank you for um, being on our show. And yes, I'm here taking notes because it's amazing how, like, everything can be a learning experience. Um, you know, I between you all and the viewing audience, my mom and I, we rave about this Dante water. Like, we're talking about, oh, how that's the best water. And then now, to hear from you, you know, the reality about the Dante. So, um, let me ask you, this, you said that this process started in Japan. So, was it like a particular scientist, biologist, or whatever that came up with the process and then, you know, started the company? 
uh, and uh, you know now it's around the world. How did it like exactly start? Um, is there any like profound story that goes with it? Like this person got it, uh, someone in their family might have gotten sick, and that that motivated them to to start the company. Anything like that? Um, well, ionized. Uh ionized water um or this the you know the electrolyzed reduced water it's been around for a long time um even even in uh i believe one of the world wars they would use some type of platelets and electrify them and do stuff with water to help heal injuries and things on uh um out in in battle you know so the whole concept of ionized uh water has been around for a long time. Um, as far as a machine or a unit that creates it uh, in such a controlled uh, environment in such a way, um, I believe uh, Enagic is the the first and original. You know, we're the, we're the original water ionizer company. Um, as far as the machines, uh, it's a medical, uh, a licensed medical device. You know, so originally uh, this is used in all the hospitals in Japan. Um, and once they saw what this machine was doing, the water was doing, then they decided, hey, let's, uh, let's introduce it to the home. So instead of just in the hospitals, everybody could have access to it in the house. Um, and, and that's pretty much how the company started, just educating people on the machine and the water. Uh, and now people are drinking it. Well, you know, well, you know, I, you know it's, it's pretty interesting that, you know, most of the planet is water. Most of us is water. And, you know, I, I brought this topic up last week because a couple of weeks ago I saw a story where they were saying, like, 2 million Americans don't have running water, access to running water. And like, I was absolutely floored. I think for most people, especially if you live in the westernized world, you know, we take water for granted. You get up in the morning, you go to your bathroom, you turn, you turn on the faucet, the water comes out. You know, um, go to your refrigerator, water is there. I, yeah. So to, to really even look at the whole dynamic of water and how crucial and important it is to us as human beings, you know. And so my, my next question is, you know, with the um, issue in Flint, Michigan, have you all, like, tried to do any sort of outreach work with, that area of the country, you know, because the water's so horrible. I'm just curious, to, you know. Um, I mean, personally, I, I've, I've, you know, done some uh, advertisements in the area. Um, okay. You know, so it's pretty much just talking with everybody on on the different, you know, on the machine. Um, the the machine's main focus uh, is restructuring water. So as, as far as the issue with Flint, Michigan, uh, that would be um, a filtration uh, concern. Got so the, the Kangen machine does filter out water, um, mm -hmm. but the filter in the Kangen machine itself, uh, with all of the stuff that was going on in Flint, uh, they would need extra filtration to help with that. Um, but with that being said, if anyone's in that area or in an area with really bad water, um, I could help everybody make sure that they get proper filtration so that they're drinking clean water and also restructured water with the Kangen machine. Got it. Now, I, one last question, and I'm going to toss it over to Mickey because I know he has probably a few. Um, with the, okay, so you were saying that a person can pretty much, anyone can pretty much be approved because there's no like credit check or whatever. So like, depending on what sort of machine, I think you said there's three levels or three um, packages. Uh, what are the differences between the packages? Like, like say, say someone like me wanted to get the lowest level, like as opposed to the highest level, like what, it, what is the difference? So, um... Well, all the machines, like you said, um, it's uh, they have no credit check payment plans for all of the units. So once you do 20% of the machine, um, you get shipped the unit and then we'll help you install it over a, uh, over a video um, like this, like a video call personally. 
um, very easy to hook up, uh, goes directly to your faucet. Okay. And um, as far as the machines go, the difference, uh, the main difference with the machines is the amount of plates uh, that are in the unit. Um, we have it. a four plate machine, a seven plate machine, and then an eight plate machine. And the more plates that are in the unit, the more potent the water is going to be uh, with all of the benefits. Um, yeah. All the machines make all the waters. It's just a matter of how quickly you're going to see the benefits uh, from drinking it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mickey. I know you have some questions. Yeah, no, I definitely do. First of all, thank you for your uh, presentation on everything. It was just very interesting to hear um, about this type of trend because I'm not, I'm somewhat familiar with it, but I, I honestly just drink water that either I get from the spigot on our fridge or I just drink it straight from tap water because I'm not the biggest connoisseur of water. Um, the one thing I did want to ask, and this is not an attack from my end or anything, but just doing some research on alkaline water. Some people say that it doesn't, that changing the pH of water or the pH levels of water doesn't actually have any health benefits. Um, what do you say to critics of alkaline water and of king and water um, who say, who might say it doesn't do anything? Yeah, my, my response to that, like it, it is, um, there are tons of different arguments and, and different perspectives out there. Um, uh, kind of like I said earlier, um, scientifically, Kangen water uh, is an alkaline water, you know, so you, you're absolutely right. I agree with you in saying that alkaline water um, really has no benefit to the body, but electrolyzed reduced water, which is what Kangen water is, uh, water that's loaded with tons of antioxidants, negative ions, um, you know, free radicals, oxidation, it's all positive in the body. Uh, so if we drink, we're basically drinking a negative water. Um, it, it is scientifically proven that this water does help fight against uh, oxidation. Um, so you're right with the sense that alkaline water has no benefit, but uh, electrolyzed reduced water like Kangen water does. For sure. And then you said you've been using it for like four years now. What's your experience been with it? Yeah. Personally, I've been drinking it for four years. Uh, love the machine. Uh, drink it every day. Even wash my face with one of the waters from the machine. Uh, the machine makes another water. It's called beauty water, which is a, the same pH of your skin. Um, it's oh. like toner right out of the unit. So I rinse my hair in it, my, my face. Um, there's all different types of uses from the machine. Um, love it for myself and uh, also sharing it with others. Um, I've been able to help people with different types of, you know, issues, health issues. Um, not something that I could speak about publicly because I can't make health claims, but if you'd like, you could message me on Instagram and I'll tell you all about it. For sure. Thanks. Um, I had, I had one other question. Um, you were saying that if someone's interested, they could put a down payment and then make monthly payments. Uh, on the average, like what's the down payment? Is it 10% of the amount, 20%? How much exactly are we talking? It's 20% uh, of the machine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So to, to clarify this, um, the let's say if it's $2,000 for one of the machines, 20% would be $400. And then you would have a payment plan after that. Or if it's $6,000, it would be 1200. So that would be the mathematics with that. And if I'm mistaken, please correct me, Chris. Um, I do have another question for you. Um, based off of what you said then, the hydro term that you use, it's very intriguing to me because I've drank alkaline water for years and so is my partner and it does definitely taste different and it, I just want to know what the difference is between alkaline and also the hydro type of term that you use so it's just a word of it before so um, in reference to that regard what's the what what is it that makes it so much more special than any other water that's out there um, I mean I could try to break it down 
you know, uh, kind of like the process. Uh, so you could see the difference of it. Um, so when the water goes through the machine, uh, it gets hit uh, with electricity and uh, kind of think of it like, um, I like to think of it like this. It's like a defibrillator, you know, a defibrillator you use to bring back, bring somebody back to life. Like you're shocking them. Um, so that's basically what the machine does. It's hitting the water with an electrical shock and it creates in that process, two streams of water. Um, you get positive ions on one side and negative on the other. So it kind of like pulls it apart and then you get two things of water and that negative water we drink. That's why it has all of that different benefit. And uh, in that process, that's where that molecular hydrogen is created. If you guys saw the picture uh, that was up. That's why the water looked even cloudy. That's the, uh, the cloudy uh, antioxidant form in the water. And uh, that's where all the benefit is. My next question for you then is also, it looks like those machines are very technical and digital. Um, uh, what happens or, or is there a backup to the machine if the electric goes out because there are problems in, with the grid all across the United States? There's power outages for storms and everything else. Is there a, a way that that can be mitigated or is that something that would be an energy concern for someone separately? Um, I mean, you do need a power source for it to work. You know, you need, need to plug it into an outlet. Um, yeah, if you if if there's no power source for the machine, then yeah, there's no way for it to essentially turn on and and be able to shock the water, you know. So you definitely do need a power source. It doesn't take much power though. Um, I I even leave my machine on overnight. Um, yeah, it really really doesn't use much as far as uh, right. electricity goes. That's good. So uh, basically, this sounds like the perfect product, to be honest with you. I don't know, I mean, Raji and Mick. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much a no brainer for me. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's all about education when it comes to this machine and this water. And uh, when you have something that is, you know, proven and it is, it does work. And I mean, water so important, you know, that's why I educate people about it. And, uh, you know, that, that simple, that simple fact, right. And, and that's the thing. It's a fact disease cannot thrive in an alkaline environment. How many people, I'm sure everybody here knows at least one person who deals with some type of health issue. And if we could take this simple fact and just change, you know, it's, it's, it's hard maybe for some people to change your diet or what you eat. Um, and things like that. And nutrition is extremely important, but it's also extremely easy to just change what water you're drinking. And then that could help your body, uh, alkalize and, and go towards that, uh, environment that we want to, uh, go after. All right. Thank you very much, Chris from Kanjin. And I hope that, uh, our viewers and everyone, that's listening will enjoy learning about water there. We could probably talk about this for many, many hours yep. <laughs> and uh, maybe you'll be on another episode next week or next month or who knows when. So uh, it, it was our pleasure. I'm going to say for me, it was my pleasure uh, to have you on the show and you are, everyone has your information, how to get a hold of you. Uh, and hopefully they will be able to learn more. And there's distribution points all across the world and also in the United States. Ironically, some of those are where we all live. We have one in Florida as a distribution center office uh, and in California uh, also as well. So uh, they are pretty much everywhere. If you want to get a hold of them, you know how to. Chris, thank you very much for your time. Janine, thank you for watching secretly and quietly in the background. And I look forward to talking to you later after the show. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Very informative. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. So 
Now, straight on to the topics of natural resources and actually the example of water shortages and quality tie in perfectly with what we were just talking about. 70% of the world is covered in water, but believe it or not, there is only 2.5% of it is fresh. In essence, only 0.007% of the planet's water is avail available for 6.8 billion people. Estimates show that we're going to have 20 billion people by 2050. Resources are diminishing. And this is a strange thing to me that where global warming that happens on its own or if it's partially due to man, um, I have no idea the specifics about that. To be honest with you, there's a lot of conjecture, so I'm not going to put my with that, but we have a lot of water that's frozen. And the only way we're going to get access to that water is if it thaws, unless we come up with a new way to tap into water. Like for myself at our house, we have well water that actually uh, takes care of the grass and our plants and everything. But all of these chemicals that people are using are leaching directly into the environment and actually going in to well water. So well water isn't necessarily safe and it can actually make people sick. My topic of discussion to follow up with what Chris said, Raji and Mick is I think you just answered it earlier. You don't really drink water. I drink water every single day. Me too. All the time. Um, so having good water is obviously important. And looking at the numbers the way that he said them makes perfect sense to have the right thing. But I'm not a really big person on, on technology stuff. So I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to do that with that, but it definitely sounds like the absolute perfect product based off of what he said. And I've been drinking alkaline water foolishly, apparently. I always thought that alkaline water was good because I heard about alkalinity. So uh, it, it just is what it is. And then something else that's interesting, we have had a helium shortage as, mel as well as many other shortages um, for over a year. Helium reserves are running low. There are only about seven or eight places on the planet that can actually tap into helium. It's part of natural gas that is separated from gas, propane, and all of that. They separate out the products, the actual chemical, and that's what creates helium. The interesting thing is that helium is used in medical purposes and also for entertainment for helium balloons, as well as technology. So, um, helium and water shortages, what do you have to say about either of those, Raji? Well, you know, <laughs> I tell you, when you think about our planet, our poor planet, and, you know, with all the pollution and everything, I mean, from even in my lifetime, I can see changes. I remember growing up in the summertime, the summers didn't seem as hot as they are now. Like they're boiling, you know. And and compared to like when I was growing up, the seasons are a lot more blurred. Like they're they're, they're not distinctive like they used to be. I really feel like a lot of things are happening with the planet, and um, therefore our natural resources are being affected. Uh, and you know, I I was um listening to oh my God, I love him too. Neil DeGroat. I think I hope I didn't get his name wrong. He's a doctor. Uh, and he's a um, uh, a scientist. And he was talking about like our existence here on the planet and how like if we keep going the way we're going and the way that we're going, uh, we're we're gonna end up uh, not being here, like not existing on the planet sooner than it's supposed to happen because eventually I think he was saying the sun is going to get too close to the planet, to, to the planet Earth, and everything will, you know, basically burn out. But that's not for like thousands of years. But he was saying in the meantime, like we need to really take care of our planet and think about the uh, things that I think a lot of people take for granted. 
and natural resources happen to be um, definitely an area that's being affected. I don't know what's scary to me as a human being right now living on the planet when you think about how we're being affected and, and the long-term effects of that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where I am on the topic, and I'm sure to hear what Nikki is thinking, because I know it's going to be profound. I am not sure I would necessarily say it's profound, but I appreciate your faith <laughs> in my abilities <laughs> and my points of view. <laughs> the way that I look at how we consume resources is that there's definitely an individual element that one needs to take in mind. You should be recycling. You should, if you have a reusable water bottle, you should have a reusable water bottle. Uh, if you, like I said, you should recycle, um, have a reusable water bottle. Like there are things that you can do on an individual level that will help. Uh, but there's also a level of, um, there's a level of resource consumption that isn't just on the regular person. For one thing, rich people just consume more than we do. I mean, if you ride in a private jet, you're consuming more gas uh, than, and, than the average person uses because the average person is flying on a flight with 300 other people. Uh, if you're uber rich and you have a massive lawn, not only do you have a ton of uh, green space that you're taking up, you're also using a ton of water to water that lawn and all the other plants, presumably exotic ones that you have in your yard because you're rich and you can do that. Uh, there's a, and then, I mean, so definitely rich people have to be taken to task for this type of thing because they disproportionately consume all sorts of resources, but so do companies as well. I mean, you hear very often about uh, grocery store workers who talk about how 40% of their produce is thrown away uh, at any given point in time. And we have nothing to do with that. I don't work at uh, Trader Joe's. I don't work at Whole Foods. I don't have any say on where that food goes. I mean, when I worked at Starbucks for many years, we were not allowed to take the expired food home. Now, whatever, I have worked, I worked there for many years and hopefully they don't care if they ever hire me back if I ever need another job. But I took food from there for years that was gonna get thrown away. And technically we weren't supposed to take it, but none of the managers that I ever had thought that it was better to throw away that food than to let someone who was gonna use it, take it. Exactly. Uh, and I, I took home so, I, there were times where I took home at least like 20 pounds of food. And that's not even including all of the coffee and tea and mocha syrup that we throw away at the end of the day. So much gets thrown away. So yes, on an individual level, one can be as responsible as one can and recycle, reuse, uh, have a reusable water bottle. I've already said all this already. But organizations, companies also need to be held accountable for what they do because they pollute way more than we do. They consume way more than we do. And they're the ones who are using these resources in this way. I mean, there's another global shortage of sand, of all things, sand, which you don't really think about. But if you think about the fact that our beaches are eroding, and if you look at the foundations of really many different buildings, they're made with cinder blocks, and that requires sand. And so not only is sand running out, but as that sand runs out, it can damage ecosystems, it can ruin beaches, and there's actually a black market for sand because it's starting to become a valuable resource that we need to learn how to conserve. But again, how is the everyday person going to be taken to task for that sort of thing? It's not on us who, it's on us to maybe raise awareness for the sand shortage, but the people who actually need to do something are the companies who use that sand and who are harvesting that sand. Uh, so this is something that our part, I think, as citizens, we need to put 
pressure on these companies and on these and on rich people, quite frankly, to be conservative with their use of resources and to make sure that they're using them in a responsible and respectful manner. And that as they harvest these resources, that they don't ruin the land. Because you think about so many, just from an agricultural perspective, there are so many plots of land that aren't arable and aren't usable anymore because we don't properly farm them. We don't properly irrigate them. I mean, a friend of mine has told me up in Maine, there's a plot of desert in the state of Maine and it's there because a community that went there and tried to farm there were so bad at farming that they just ruined the land. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess what I'll say is people just, people, really companies need to learn how to ethically and responsibly um, harvest resources. That's my thought process on it. Cause I, as much as I do, what I can to, you know, lower my carbon footprint and reduce the amount of waste that I put out into the world. I'm not stopping anything on the, I'm not stopping anything on like a massive sale just by my own actions. You know, Mickey, I was just going to say, I think you're hitting on something because it, it literally, I believe will take all of us to do our part. So, you know, each and every one of us in our own little ways can do our part, which then will impact the planet in big ways, you know, but just like the simple thing of uh, um, littering, you know, like throwing a can out the window or like you're eating a sandwich from McDonald's and you throw the wrap crap, things yes. like that. Um, there's so many things, recycling, you know, not throwing your cans and your bottles and stuff in the regular trash, making an effort to, to have, you know, your things recycled. So, you know, little by little, I think we can all get apart. But what really kills me is people that are in denial, okay? That, like, they're like, global warming? What global warming? Like, uh, what is that? Global warming? And it's like, hello, you around, you know? So anyway, Joseph. Back to you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that, Raji, and also Mick. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of things. Um, uh, it, uh, I'm just waiting for something to catch up, and now it looks like it's working properly. So uh, basically, you both brought up two really good points. Number one, people are responsible for being able to do what they can do to try to minimize their impact in a negative way. I think like what we do, we, we collect rainwater, we use the rainwater, and plant, uh, I should say we water our plants. So that is extremely helpful to be able to do that. Um, and in addition to that, we plant seeds as well. We have an outdoor garden and an indoor garden, which is very helpful also. We have battery charge devices as opposed to uh, using gasoline, um, which, which is obviously better, but there are a lot of options that are out there from something as simple as making your own water collecting container just to collect rainwater. That's, that's something that should be something easy for everybody to do. If you want to put a little bit more effort into things, you could potentially create your own wind turbine. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to be able to do that to just something as simple as charge a cell phone. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, in addition to that, I think that it's important, like you both said, that we all have to be aware of what our footprint is and, 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 and what's happening, that, that we don't use things willy-nilly or, or, or uh, wasteful or wastefully so. Um, I want to also just re-mention the fact of the helium shortage. Helium was actually found by accident and helium was merely a byproduct of natural gas harvesting. The United States has been the largest producer of helium since 1925 thanks to a massive reserve found across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Fittingly named the Federal Helium Reserve. 
but that is set to close down production in 2021 and scientists are looking for new reserves to replace it. It's not something that is renewable. And then in reference to water, you can purify water if it's salt, um, but it's a whole process. But those are just two of the things that are important and talking about Kanjin water. They contain the strongest antioxidants in the world, molecular hydrogen. It is your water full of antioxidants. That's Kanjin water, the world's most anti-rich water. One glass of Kanjin water is equal to 20 glasses of green tea or five pounds of blueberries. And if you like broccoli, 12 pounds of broccoli. They have some great pricing options with no credit check. They offer pricing for you. The luxury best K8 has eight plates, $5,447.03. That would be approximately $1,400 down for the luxury model and 24 month payments of $180. The junior model is on the lower end, but still just as effective, especially if it's just one person. It's $32,69.53. No credit check, $852.84 down, and 15 months of $172 payments. You can do the math and figure out what you spend on your water. We, like Raji and myself, we spend a lot on water. I personally believe that Kanjin is definitely a good option for everybody out there. So I would suggest that you try it and see what you think. What I'm gonna tell you about now is WeGo LLC. They are a local company that operates here right in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that also serves the Wilton Manors, Middle River Terrace, and Oakland Park areas as well. If you pre-plan with them, you can make your life a lot easier during these stress-filled times. If you need a ride to or from work, if you have to go to work instead of working safely from home like we are, or if you need your grocery shopping done, you can go ahead and do that as well as get your dirty laundry taken care of. No contact options make things safe for you and also their drivers and delivery people. They will be wearing face masks and shields. And in addition to that, after each and every passenger in the car, if you have to go to or from somewhere, they will be sanitizing as well. Visit www.wegollc.app to learn more. You can pre-plan your trip 24 hours in advance because services are subject to availability. If you are also looking for a cleaning solution in the neighborhood in Wilton Manors or the Fort Lauderdale area, do I have the answer for you? Yeah, I do. Trustworthy cleaners. They have been cleaning houses, vacation rentals, pools, boats, and cars for over 10 years. And they have new procedures in place for protective measures as well. You're open and ready to serve you now with new no contact options to keep you and your employees safe. You can email them directly at trustworthycleaners33304 at gmail.com. So now back to the show. Uh, what I want to continue talking about is I think possibly part of the best part of the show is coming up in a couple minutes. We have some special food preparations coming on from La in Ohio. Uh, Raji's got her update. Mick has his. So does Carlita. And so do I with COVID. But if anyone has any questions or concerns, please don't forget. You can email me, joseph at mysouthernexposure.site, Raji at Raji at mysouthernexposure.site, or Mick at mick at mysouthernexposure.site. Raji, do you have any other thing to say before we move on to the next part of the show? <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having a little condition over here because what I heard about the food segment, I got excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that too. But on a serious note, I'm, I'm so happy that we were able to, you know, discuss uh, about more about water and then also this um, Canyon is, is that how you pronounce it? Canyon, um, Kangen, Kangen, 
tangent. Yeah, um, excuse my uh, French or whatever you want to call it. But no, I'm so happy we were able to discuss about it. And I really, I mean, it sounds like an excellent product. And I, I think anyone, like you were saying, would benefit from getting something like that. Oh, my goodness. And I love the fact that they have a payment option, which is really, I think, doable for a lot of people. So, yeah. That's pretty much what I say. Nick, are you? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> I just think it's important right now that we talk about where we're getting our water from and more so to the topic that Raji brought up last week that a lot of people don't have access to clean water. A lot of people don't have access uh, to water even whether or not it's clean, they just don't have access to it. Uh, so I think that that's something that's very important to talk about. And I mean, I personally have not used uh, Kangen water or really drank alkaline water before, but I think that it's something, if you wanna try it out, you're more than, I say you're more than welcome to try it out and see how it works for you. I mean, in the end it's water, so it's not going to kill you. So. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I say try it out. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> that was a good one. I love it. I don't yeah. even think you were trying to be funny, but I'm sorry to sound funny. You're like, okay. in the end, this is water. It's not going to kill you. Well, yeah. So. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started with Raji's update okay. first. Okay. Well, you know what? I just want to cap, uh, cap that off and say, well, maybe, maybe it will kill you depending on which type of water you drink. So you might want to consider doing something like this and getting a system in our houses. But, um, okay, so it's my turn to talk about my topic. Yes. Oh, okay. Correct. Okay, well, um, so then on a serious note, I um, definitely want to talk about a, uh, God, a civil rights icon. Um, John Lewis passed away, and uh, his funeral was this week. And I'm going to tell you, we all are here for a reason. Everyone, I believe, has a purpose in life, but John Lewis knew his purpose from very, very young. You know, I was amazed to hear his story, uh, to hear how he started with Martin Luther King at the, you know, really young age of 23, early 20s, and was so intentional and, you know, focused about the work that he knew he had to do. He, I would say, gave his life in the name of civil rights. And, you know, with the racial tensions going on in this country right now, um, and you, it, it, it's almost like I was talking to a cousin of mine who lived through the, you know, the civil rights movement. And um, she was saying, you know, this today is kind of reminding her of back then. And so, you know, it's funny, even though we've come a long way as people of color, um, I, there's still a long way to go. And you can clearly see that in the things that are going on here in America um, with, with racism and that sort of thing. So, um, John Lewis, I feel, gave his life to this movement, to, you know, the civil rights movement. And... Um, you know, this is someone that was in Congress from 1986, and he served 17 terms in Congress, um, you know, fighting, really fighting for equality for everyone. Not just, you know, when you, when you hear civil rights, basically it's beyond, like, the different races. It's basically saying that everybody is entitled 
to the civil rights, no matter who you are, you know, what, what race you are, what class you come from, what religion you are. I mean, that's the whole thing. And he took on uh, the whole thing of Martin Luther King, um, nonviolence, nonviolence method. Um, and which was then also taken, King took that from Gandhi, um, where you, know, you, can, you can protest, you can fight against something, but you don't have to be violent about it. And he was very committed to that, uh, John Lewis was. And so um, I sat and watched the funeral this Thursday, and it was very, very moving to me. Um, you know, uh, oh my gosh, three of our presidents were there. Uh, um, Clinton, Bush, and Obama. And they all spoke. And this is to show you the man that John Lewis was, because um, so many people had stories that they shared about this man and his integrity. And so um, I was so moved and just um, so grateful, so grateful, I'm sorry, so grateful for for what he did for us as people of color. Um, you know, I don't take that for granted and I'm really, really thankful. I mean, what was the most touching thing to me is when they took his herds across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in, in Selma. <laughs> that was the same bridge that he walked across in the 60s and was beaten, beaten, brutally beaten by the state troopers at that time. And next door to his zero this past Thursday, you know, he, his house was taken across the bridge and the state troopers were standing there to welcome him and honor him, you know, and, and, um, and so that was just so moving to me to think like, you know, at one in the 60s, he was walking across that bridge to be, to, to, to be literally be brutally beaten. And now, you know, they were taking his um, body across the bridge to be honored, you know. So, um, definitely a moving part in a holiday song. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know who Jennifer Holiday is. Um, but yeah, it was just a beautiful funeral. And I think that he definitely got what he deserved. He deserved a, a really good send-off. So I am, I don't know. I don't know. I hope, hopefully, he passed the torch on because the work is not done yet. It's not done. Like I said, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. And so I would say that, you know, he's a great example to many of us here fighting whatever fight, fighting the good fight. And one thing he, he would always say is get yourself into good trouble. Get yourself into trouble because he was arrested, I think, don't quote me, but I think it was about 40 times in his life. And one of, in, in one of his much pictures, he was smiling. This is him in his early 20s. And he said the reason why he was smiling because he knew that even though he had been arrested, he was on the right side of history. He, he was doing the right thing. He was getting into good trouble in the name of justice for all. So I just want to um, basically close with saying that I'm so grateful to the work that John Lewis did. And I know, and I think we all should know that we stand on his shoulders. Um, not only people of color like myself, but everyone, everyone. Thank you. Mickey. Oh, that was very sweet, Raji. I'm glad that you brought that up. And um, thanks again for sharing that. I do appreciate it. And that is something that we should bring up um, in our shows just when 
someone when a figure like that passes to acknowledge the work that they've done um, and then acknowledge the work that still needs to be done because i know that he would say as well that there is still work to be done um, so thank you for that uh sure. mine is a little bit more lighthearted. uh not quite lighthearted because everything uh nowadays is in the age of COVID is a bit of a struggle uh but what i wanted to talk about this week are ways uh, that you can help support independent artists uh, during this time. One of the big things that happened this past week is a piece of legislation that was introduced uh, by actually two uh, different members of Congress on both sides of the aisle. So it's sponsored by a Democrat and a Republican. It is called the Help Independent Tracks Succeed Act, uh, otherwise known as the HITS Act. And so this particular act, if it was passed, would allow pretty much all of the musicians' uh, studio costs to be paid up front. Uh, so it allots $150,000 to an artist uh, in order for them to pay for recording, uh, for mastering, any other production expenses that they would need to record music, studio sessions, stuff of that nature. Anything that they record uh, within a year of them receiving that grant would be covered by this act. Now, at this point in time, uh, it obviously has not gone through. It's only just been introduced this past Friday. But I would highly, highly recommend that if you care about independent musicians, uh, that you call your representatives and let them know that you support the HITS Act, which was introduced by Ron Estes of Kansas and Linda Sanchez of California. Now, like I said, uh, Estes happens to be a Republican and Sanchez is a Democrat. So this is a piece of legislation that uh, fault that uh, is important to people on both sides of the aisle. Uh, not that that should really just, not that bipartisanship should make you, how do I put this, should be the defining goal of like any sort of like political um, uh, piece of legislation basically. Basically not everything has to be bipartisan for it to be good. But I know that in this country, political parties, whether you like it or not, are an important part of a lot of people's sections and, a, and an important way, or it, and are important to a lot of people and how they vote. Um, so like I said, this is a very, this is a very, very um, important issue that I think does cross both lines. So that's something to think about uh, if you want to support independent musicians. Also, this coming Friday, since it is the first Friday of the month, uh, it is Bandcamp Friday. So if you go to bandcamp.com, that's B A N D C A M P.com, any and all proceeds that are made on the site go directly to artists or labels that you purchase from. So if you go on Bandcamp and you decide to purchase something from Bjork, it's going to go directly to Bjork. Now, Bjork, I'm happy to give her my money. She probably doesn't need it as much as maybe some other independent musicians, so I would probably spend it elsewhere. But that's just an example. If you go to Bandcamp, and the great thing about Bandcamp is that most of the uh, purchases that you can make on there are name your own price. So you pay what you can pay. And uh, obviously, you should probably pay, I would say, like a dollar per track. I think is a very safe thing. If you're paying for a 10 song album, you should pay $10 uh, because it's important to pay for music. Which brings me to my last point. Um, you should cancel your Spotify premium accounts. Spotify is evil. Uh, just this past week, the CEO of Spotify came out with a quote saying that in order for, basically that in order for artists to survive in this uh, day and age, they need to be making music at a much higher rate and a much higher output. And basically what he's saying is that people need to put out new material and new music every single year. Now, as I just brought up with the Hits Act, uh, making music is not cheap, it is time consuming, it's not easy, and you can't exactly rush art. Any creative will tell you that. So to put the onus and pressure on artists to say that they have to come up with more and more content each year uh, in order to survive and in order to make money off of something like Spotify is quite frankly gross to me. Uh, and the fact that a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company would have 
the gall to say that sort of thing tells me a lot about what that company stands for. And as I've brought up before, Spotify pays artists a very me a very, very measly amount of money per stream. Uh, in fact, a million streams is equivalent to about a couple thousand dollars, if even that. So yeah, cancel your Spotify premium account, go on Bandcamp this Friday and call your representatives and have them support the Help Independent Tracks Succeed Act, or the HITS Act. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to La with her cooking segment for the next part of the show. La! <laughs> I'm excited! <laughs> oh, you need to add here on mute. I think you're muted. You look on your phone. I'm sorry. No, I'm here. I'm sorry. Um, I thought uh, we are ready to go to Laura. Now we can hear you. Now we okay. can hear you, honey. All right. Yeah, we're waiting for a little TD. That's, uh, you know, the language for technical director. Hey there, technical director. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> Um, you know, this week uh, on Essential Pleasures, which is what we're going to call this cooking segment, because you got to eat two, three times a day. You got to do it. Why not make it good? I mean, enjoy yourself. Have that little pleasure. So um, we were talking earlier about gardening, I believe. And I just wanted to throw in that I have got a garden. I grow raspberries, grapes, tomatoes, peppers and a few different types of herbs. So we were talking a couple of weeks ago about growing tomatoes and growing them in a container. And we've got a great tomato called the Magic Mountain. And these tomatoes look like this. So they're a great size, not too big, not too little. And these Magic Mountains are delicious. They produce tons of fruit. They're very disease resistant, which is great. And they grow really well in a container. And if you want to grow tomatoes, a great companion plant is basil. And not only are they good together in tomato sauce and caprese salad and that sort of thing, the basil protects the tomatoes from some of the pests that might get to your tomatoes. So that's a great way to increase your production. So the Magic Mountain, I highly recommend First year I've grown them. They are delicious. And I don't like those tomatoes that get so big and they get all lumpy and everything. These are a perfect size. You can eat the whole thing up. Perfect size for a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, let's just say. Just saying. That's not what we're going to make today, though. But anyway, you want to look for some companion plants to your other plants. Mint goes well with your lettuce. And you can always put a little mint in your salad. So those sort of things are really, really great. Now, this week we're making peach cobbler. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. Finally got my peaches from the peach truck, baby. The peach truck.com. We got 25 pounds of peaches for $40. Now, that sounds like a lot, but each peach is about a half a pound. So you got about 50 peaches. You can share them with a friend. Unfortunately, they are sold out now for the summer, so you missed out on the peach truck, but I would keep them in mind. They've got some great recipes, and there was one for Asian short ribs with peaches that you do in the slow cooker, mm -hmm. and yes, I know, Raji, I'm going to be making those. I don't know if I'm going to make them for the show, but they sounded great. I love a slow cooker. Oh, my God. This week, <laughs> we are making peach cobbler, baby. And this is a great recipe because you pretty much do it all in one pot. And what I like to use is a cast iron skillet. Cast iron skillet is great because it gives you iron. comes out in the food to you. Most people, especially women, need more iron. And my handy dandy silicone spatula, this thing is great for your nonstick pans, or really any pan. It can get hot. And it's just, the spatula is a great kitchen tool, so you want to get that. For the peach cobbler, you are going to need butter. I highly recommend this Irish butter, and I get it at where? Aldi, yes, it's a great price. It's grass-fed. It's really delicious stuff, and it's not that much more than the regular butter, so I recommend that. But you need peaches. This is going to be on the website, by the way, so you don't have to write this down. Brown sugar, 
I know I don't have to show you guys this, but you need bourbon. I know you know what bourbon is, right? <laughs> you need vanilla extract. You need a little bit of flour. This is a neat thing in this cobbler. It has ground pecans in the topping, and the pecans go so great with the bourbon and the butter and the peaches. I recommend putting those in. Baking powder, cinnamon, a little bit more butter because I can't have enough butter, and a little bit of milk, and then a little bit of cinnamon sugar on top of it. Real easy to do. You slice up the peaches, you put them in the melted butter, and uh, the cinnamon and the vanilla, and then you mix together the flour, the more butter, and the baking powder, the salt. You mix that all together. It makes a little dough. You put it on top of the peaches that are in the pan. You throw it in the oven, and about a half hour later, you're having some peach cobbler. And I made it the other night. My daughter was here sitting on the deck, and I said, oh, I didn't make the peach cobbler yet. And she goes, well, I'll wait for it. And she said, wow. When I finally brought it out, she goes, that didn't take too long. So it really doesn't take all that long, and it is delicious. So these are a couple of my beautiful peaches I got from the peach truck. Love these things. And I'm going to show you my finished product. We ate some of it, but uh, so, 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 so good. I know. I know. And Ryan, it looks, you know, it, put it, it, in a bowl. it. It looks really, really, really good, Laura. It looks well, really, really good, it but unfortunately, reheat it up in your microwave. A little bit of whipped cream. I'm gonna have this as soon as I get off the air. But um, I highly recommend this recipe. But also on the peach truck, they had a really nice recipe. They use self-rising flour, and a tip for that is just you can use regular flour and add a little bit, bit of baking powder to it and you don't have to buy a special kind of flour. So that's always good to know. So my tips this week are the Magic Mountain Tomato, the Peach Cobbler, and the Peach Truck. And I have one final tip for you. You may not know, but I sing in a pretty popular Cleveland band called The Pop Tarts. And we do 60s girl group music. And we're a little more tarty than we are pop, but you know. Anyway, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. A new flavor, pretzel chocolate salted pretzel chocolate pop tart oh so um i gotta decide now between peach cobbler or pop tart peach cobbler <laughs> i don't know might have them both i can report back at the end of the show cheers Raji, what you got babe uh yeah. cheers thank you so thank you so much laura unfortunately um, uh, we were having some video difficulty, but everyone heard everything you had to say. That's the most important part. The other yes, thing yeah, is that I know the other, the other thing is that the instruction will be uploaded to the website later, as well as the photos. In addition to that, I'm sure we can put together a little six minute segment and I will upload the video completely separately. So everyone can see your beautiful sun shining face. Sometimes that's what right. happens when you have a live show. Things don't necessarily work out all the time. So uh, my thing next, now I don't know if she's available, but the absolutely drop dead gorgeous Carlita. If you are ready to talk and give us your perspective on things, Carlita. I am. Um, do you want to, can we do a virtual, can we do a virtual five, like, can you put your hand up? We can do a virtual high five. High five. You got to go to the, towards this, the other way. <laughs> oh, Turn the other to the side. There you go. Here we go. Vir no, the other way. There you go. A virtual high five. High five. <laughs> we get a virtual high five. <laughs> so, how is everybody this week? Hello, darling. Hi. Yeah. How are you, Raji? Doing pretty good. My mouth is watering because of the And the delicious peach cobbler. Delicious. So we are enjoying this beautiful weather out here. How about you? We are going to talk tonight about reflexology. Reflexology on the feet, the hands, and the ears. And how important it is. It uh, stimulates the organs and it stimulates if you have a headache or a backache or anything like that it could actually uh get stimulated on the bottom of the feet the hands or even the ears 
and it could help take uh it could like help ease the pressure or the pain away and uh I started doing reflexology about 22 years ago. I was in a bad car accident myself, and uh, I had a certified reflexologist work on me. And the doctors at first wanted to do like um, uh, back surgery, and it was from a car accident. And I said, I have four beautiful sons, and I work all the time. I cannot, you know, unless it's like a, I have to have it done. But I kept thinking that there was something else out there. The certified reflexologist then did it to me about three times a week. And wow, did it, it change. I could put my ankles behind my head. I'm so flexible, and it really, truly helped me. For about seven to nine weeks, I had it done. And uh, I feel brand new. Fabulous. Does anybody have, like, any questions about... Any kind of headache or reflexology question or anything like that? You know, I just I wanted I just wanted to say um, it's amazing how that stuff really it can work. Um, I have a friend; uh, he was a dancer, um, a straight dancer, by the way. Oh, <laughs> which nice. is rare. But anyway, it's a whole other show. <laughs> um, and you know, unfortunately. He was doing a routine, and he lifted a, 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 a girl dancer up in the air, and oh. she didn't adjust herself the way she was supposed to, and, and ended up falling, they crashed down, and he became paralyzed. <gasps> and he was paralyzed for, like, I think almost a year. Oh. But what happened was there was a doctor that he had at the hospital that asked him, I think he was into um, uh, Eurovedic, uh, and I know I'm mispronouncing it, but, uh, you know, the Eastern type medicine, too. And he asked him, listen, I have someone that can come in, you know, one uh, every day and do reflexology on you. And so, long story short, this person, uh, she came, and she was doing it on him, and she was using, like, all the you know, the, um, um, uh, like, oils that make different oils and that sort of thing. Well, long story short, he's walking again. I believe and it. it and, and so what you're talking about is amazing. It's amazing because it, it really does work. It is powerful. The only reason I got involved with it is because I was a huge fiberglass nails and I was huge with them. I traveled for them. Um, I worked for a company called Back Scratchers, and I still do them now to this day. And uh, absolutely beautiful product. I walked away from fiberglass nails, a lot of it, to doing um, reflexology to, and I'm not a doctor or anything, but to helping people take away their pain or their um, any kind of discomfort that they may have. If they walk on a gravel stone it could actually help so much people don't realize how much it helps just to walk on a gravel stone it's beautiful and it's free reflexology you just drink a lot of water walk around barefoot or just with a pair of like thin socks and uh it'll actually help with the um discomfort that you may have in your back Maybe a headache, maybe um, your shoulder, your neck. It's all connected to your feet, your hands, and your ears. It's so important to pull it up online and look up reflexology for the hands, the feet, and the ears. It's truly amazing. You could even do it to yourself okay, gotta, in the car. I got, I, got, I got a quick question for you. Yes. So show me, as well as everybody else, because we talked about this a couple weeks ago on the show. Yes. Show, show people the spot for the headache, because I know where the headache spot is, but then you mentioned organs for other parts of your hand. So the head is in people? the, yeah, your head is inside your thumb. Your, like, your head is right here. So if your head hurts, go to the little circles inside your thumb, and it'll be like a little dot. It goes to a circle. You could take a pencil, an eraser, and you could go in there, and you could grind it real hard, and it'll like it'll stimulate your brain, like your head. 
See that, Joe? That's there you go. That's nice. <laughs> so you want to go in there and you want to massage and manipulate it. Then you can even go down and work on the, the neck area in the base of your thumb. And then you want to come down. And people don't realize, like when you're working with your outer part right here, this is your spine. This is your spine. All of your organs are in your hands and your feet. I'll show you my foot. It was hurting really bad. And I thought to myself, I didn't have, I, it was like a, two years ago and I'll never forget. I had the worst stomach ache and I never have belly issues, but my foot was hurting at the same time. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's in the arch of your foot and it worked. I massaged it and my stomach, my belly ache was completely gone. People don't realize the feet are what you could do the best. The ears, what you do is you pull and then you squeeze and then you pull and then squeeze the tip and pull and squeeze. I'm going to take my ear little things out for a second, but you go around from the top and you could even do this sitting in a car with one hand, like at a stoplight, but you come up and you pull and squeeze, pull and squeeze. Your ears are going to stay nice and red, but you'll feel a difference if you're getting it done. Pull and squeeze. Pull and squeeze, pull and squeeze all the way down, and then go inside, and then you could massage up inside, all in this side like that, and those are all your organs. Oh. The feet. Okay, so then my, my question for you is with that, so what you're saying is your hand is basically your body. Yes. In a nutshell, your foot is your body. Yeah. And so are your ears. Yes, your so ears you are actually an upside down fetus. the pressure points for each one of them. Is yes. that correct? Yes. So do you want to see anything in your foot or no? Do you, do you have any? It depends on how, how your feet, how do your feet look? Do they look nice or Please, what do they look like? Always, my, my feet are, I don't even want to say it right now, suckable. They're always nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honey. But they're always. I know you got to keep it from head that? to toe. Do you see that? So this part, this part of your foot right there, this is your stomach right there. And then your spine and then your neck and your head and your heart, right? Wow. Your liver, your lungs, it's all in there. And then your sciatica, look how nice and smooth, isn't that nice? <laughs> but your, you could walk on a... You would feel amazing if you walked at least three times a week on a gravel stone. It is so, it's so refreshing and people don't understand how, you know, by taking like a nice cool bath or a cool shower and walking all over the stones too, it's like, it's pretty much life changing. It's truly life changing. I recommend it to everybody to try it. Well, uh, one thing that I want to say is yes. that my partner suffers from sciatica. Oh. And, and I think part of the reason why he does is he wears flip-flops. Worst Would thing. Would it be better for him to walk around barefoot instead of wearing flip-flops? Because the, the soles are very thin, but he likes to walk around barefoot. So which is better, walk around barefoot in the house on tile or in tennis shoes? Because what you're suggesting that I think makes perfect sense for me. And if it makes perfect sense for me, it probably does for other people. I don't know what Mick has to say about that. Walking around in flip-flops is the worst thing that a, that a person could do to their body. It actually, um, first off, I could take a piece of garlic, rub it on the bottom of my foot, and I could taste it within 30 seconds. Now imagine what a piece of rubber that people are walking on, their rubber flip-flops all day. It's going into the human body, right? So if you're going to wear a flip-flop, make sure it's leather. And make sure you could even get like Birkenstock or you could get some type of, uh, there's this one type of sandal and I can't remember what it is. You pop it in the oven. They have it at flip, oh, Fleet Foot or something. Um, oh, I hate to say the wrong name. But you take it and you pop it in the oven just for like so many moments and then you pull it out and you put your, you stand in it and you walk and it actually um, puts your foot impression in the shoe and they're amazing. Fleet feet. That's what I think it's called fleet feet, but there are wonderful sandals. Um, the Birkenstocks also might hurt the feet, but believe it or not, they're very good for the bottom of the feet. 
And of course, you don't want to wear rubber or plastic on the bottom of the feet. I would, I would walk around barefoot before walking around in flip-flops. But the sciatica is, again, the whole bottom of the heel, like the bottom of the heel, and you could manipulate by pressing in on it, or he could stand on a golf ball, and he could, like, roll on it, or he could even take a can of um, soup, preferably, like, Campbell's or something, like, small and hard, because sometimes the, like, the coated ones on the inside, those are thinner, and those are going to be a little bit, they're not going to be as hard. You want something like solid and hard to roll the foot on. And if you've got a backache, you're going to say, wait a minute, that's in my foot. It's not in just the feet. It's in, the, it's in your, um, your organs by, by rolling on the can of soup. What do you <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just sorry because you were saying that it's got to be hard. You said it about four times in a row, so it was just making me laugh. And I'm sure Raji is cackling back there in the back, back and Laura as well, and Marty. Um, Mick, what do you have to say? Because I heard, I saw your head going up and down, agreeing, and then also disagreeing. What do you have to say to Carlita? Well, I strongly agree with people just not wearing flip flops. I like, and I say that as someone who currently is wearing a pair of slides right now, but I just wear them around the house. Personally, I don't think, I think if you really want to keep your house relatively clean, it's easy if you just have a pair of like slippers or socks that you wear around the house because your bare feet tend to like track dust around and other stuff like that. But that's beside the point. But what I will say is that I agree with Carlita that I think the flip flops aren't really the best thing. And like, Living out here in California where, I mean, just since it doesn't rain very often, the streets just aren't, or the sidewalks especially, aren't always that clean. So just seeing people, like, wearing uh, flip-flops on, like, Hollywood Boulevard, I just... The cringe. Like, that's, that's some fear factor stuff that I would never get into. Me personally, though. Up, I see um, Laura again in the corner. Hi, Laura. <laughs> I was just to say, I'm sure that Laura has a question for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Still can't hear you, honey. I think, I think you're maybe you have, muted. You're muted again, sweetheart. But this is what happens with the live show. Now you are. Now you're back. I'm now muted. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. I just no, wanted now, to agree with, agree with Carlita. I'm a big reflexology person and have been for probably about 20 years now. And she's absolutely correct. I mean, you can just take two fingers and put them on either side of your ear and rub your ears around. It will really help make you feel a lot better when you're feeling tense. But if you learn how to do it, you can always do your hands. I mean, even if you're sitting in the library or whatever, you can't always be working on your feet. But the feet are the best place to work. And if you look online and get one of those little maps of the body, you can find the exact right area. I always told my kids when they were little, the top of their thumb if they had a headache and I showed them the stomach you only have a stomach reflex on the left hand side because you only have one stomach um, and the reflex is in the middle of the left hand and I would say rub this when you get a tummy ache and I've told people this when I've been out and about and blah 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 and it really works reflexology is a great natural treatment for the body so right on Carlita <laughs> thank you Laura thank you so thank you so much uh, Laura and 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 uh, now it's time for me to go over some COVID stuff after your happiness Carly and if you want to stick around go ahead and do that um, we have a little bit more of the show left to go over um, I have to talk about some grim things unfortunately with COVID and Raji and Laura and Mick, unfortunately, we all know about what's happening. And it's part of what I feel is necessary for me to do um, for the show. And uh, unfortunately, we are up to 4,620,444 people that actually have COVID in the United States right now. We are up to 154,447 deaths. 1,461,000 people have recovered. California, you're at the, the you're at the you're at the lead of the pack, and we're right behind you, buddy. Unfortunately, so you're at five hundred thousand one thirty, not a good number. Um, we're at four eighty, and Texas is at four thirty, and your deaths are nine thousand two hundred twenty-four. 
ours are 7,022. And a week ago, we discussed these numbers and we had a horrible week and horrible deaths. And the way that it's looking right now, we're going to probably overtake California. And then Texas is going to probably pass up everybody also as well shortly after. Um, what I do want to do is put some actual names to the numbers because I think it's important to remember that there are actually people out there that have names and it's not just a number. So uh, bear with me for a moment. It's not a, a very good thing, but I think that it's necessary and it, it, it's appropriate to do it. So let's give me a minute to go through a couple of these. Maurice Yeager died on March 22nd. Stanley Zimmerman died on March 22nd also as well. Joseph D. Martino, March 22nd. Carol Brickens, March 23rd. Leroy Han Singer, March 23rd. Ronald Ross, March 23rd. Diumen Etienne, March 23rd. William Hicks, March 23rd. Araldo Valdez, March 24th. Max Grube, March 24th. Quan Su, March 24th, and Michael McNally, March 24th. I'm going to continue to read these names because I think that it's appropriate to honor people. Um, and it's not meant to be something of sadness, but it is definitely something that we need to be reminded of because it's not going to go away. There's a lot of names to go through. There's a lot of people. There's faces for all these people. These are mothers, daughters, sons, grandchildren, grandfathers. So I feel that it's appropriate to go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, Laura, your video is not working and your audio um, is, is a little wonky. So uh, hopefully we'll fix that out next time. What I do wanna do is go over some business information for, the, for our next break. I wanna let you know once again about WeGo LLC. It's a locally owned company that operates in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, that also services Wilton Manor's area as well, Middle River Terrace and Oakland Park. Pre-plan your trip with them and make your life easy during these stress-filled times. Need a ride to or from work? Need a ride to get your grocery shopping done or even laundry services? They'll take care of it for you. No contact options. Make things safer and easier for you and also their delivery drivers. They will be wearing face masks and shields in addition to cleaning and sanitizing after each person leaves the vehicle. Visit www.wegollc.app to learn more. Plan your trip 24 hours in advance because services are subject to availability. Don't forget, wegollc.app. Contact them today. You will definitely not regret it. I missed a little piece of information earlier today, and I want to go ahead and mention it because our sponsor wanted me to do that and, and I want to definitely make them happy. So the most important thing is you can also Instagram them. Their Instagram page is at Canjun dash water dash machines. That's underscore actually. It's at K-A-N-G-E-N underscore water underscore machines. I wanted to mention it because it's definitely important and I think that uh, everyone would definitely appreciate having some healthy and clean water. If you are looking for cleaning solutions here in Wilton Manor's Middle River Terrace area or Fort Lauderdale, I definitely have the answer for you. Trustworthy cleaners. They've been cleaning houses, boats, vacation rentals, cars for over 10 years. They have excellent references, but they do have some new procedures to keep everybody safe. No contact options for you and for the employees. You can email them directly at trustworthycleaners33304 at gmail.com. That's trustworthycleaners33304 at gmail.com. And got to tell you about one of the best technical producers that I've ever met and known for over 30 years. Every Wednesday at noon, make sure to tune in to Big Daddy's Stock Tips from the Hood. He's on our show once a month and actually back there in the backgrounds right now trying to help me and us give you all an entertaining evening at home. Big Daddy Marty Allen shares his unique insights on stock market with hot stock tips, trends, when you want to buy, when you want to sell, learn how to, you can learn how to become a day trader. The BST, 
every Wednesday at noon on the Rogue Radio Network. That's the Rogue Radio Network. Check it out, rogueradionetwork.com. So we've had a pretty busy show and a lot of wonderful people on. I want to just remind everyone at home, thank you for watching. If you're watching live, make sure to save us, subscribe, like, and share, and then repeat as necessary uh, so everyone else knows about the show. In addition to that, thank you to everyone who's already watched all of our shows. Thank you to Raji. Thank you to Mick. Thank you to Laura, everyone out there. But don't forget, there are some advertising options available, and you can also work for us. You can work at mysouthernexposure.site. The address is right down there underneath my little fingers, I think, right about there. <laughs> work at mysouthernexposure.site. You can also advertise at mysouthernexposure.site. So you too can be part of the show, just like Kanjan Water and Enagic. And you can be in an interview format and have live content that's gonna be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, indefinitely for your audience and also your target demographic. Raji, what do you got to say? It's closing yeah. time and you can't stay here, but you got to go home. I got to go home. <laughs> well, I am home. <laughs> um, no, I just want to say I think we had a fabulous show today and I hope that all of our viewers enjoy. Um, you know, don't forget, leave your comments. We want to hear from you. Uh, and definitely any suggestions that you have. Uh, in particular, topics you like for us to make be the best. By all means, you know, give us your feedback. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. And looking forward to seeing you next show next week. So, on that note, I wish everyone love, peace, good health, prosperity, happiness, and many wonderful blessings. Tossing it over to Mickey. <laughs> Thanks for that, Raji. And I wish the same to all of our viewers out there. Uh, these are scary times. These are difficult times. So be safe, keep social distancing, wear a mask, uh, and do what, do what you can to try and alleviate this for yourself and people who are potentially less fortunate than you. Uh, donate to organizations. Join an organization if you're not a part of one right now. Uh, make sure you're supporting your local businesses um, and make sure that you're just keeping abreast of how things are going. Know what the COVID numbers are. Uh, know if there are protests happening in your city. Keep, uh, stay informed and be smart about the news that you are reading because not all news is good news. And with that, I'm going to throw it back over to Joseph. And thanks again for watching, everybody. Oh, and by the way, by the way, my mouth is watering. I'm getting ready to run to the kitchen to get something to eat because Rob has got me hungry. <laughs> well, thank you for that, Raji. And next week, hopefully, we'll get my video up. I don't know what the deal is, but love being with you all. Eat well, be a good person, and we'll see you next week. Hey. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that might be it. I don't know where Joseph went. I think, I think he's gone. Well, on that note, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm not okay. gone. I had my, oh, I had okay. myself on mute. It's okay. It's not the, it's not the end of the world if people don't hear me last. It's fine. I think actually it might alleviate some nightmares if they, the last thing they see before they fall asleep is my image. Um, but. Thank you, a special thank you to Raji and Mick and Laura and Cardia and Marty Allen there at the production studio. Thank you so much. Hey, also, Big Daddy. Amen. Hi, and Daddy. a special thank you to Janine Widener. Uh, thank you so much for your participation and watching the whole show. Thank you also as well. Uh, the people that are watching at home, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can visit us directly. The content is continually available every single show that we've done from the very beginning is available you can just go to www.mysouthernexposure.site you can follow us on facebook twitter instagram 
uh, there's another one I can't remember. Um, YouTube's also as well. Uh, I can forget all the names. It's kind of hard for me to get them all in the head, but you just pull up the website, mysouthernexposure.site, and you scroll down. You're gonna see probably Laura's photo or Raji's or mine. That would be the current content for the week. And then if you scroll down a little further, you can go ahead and click whichever icon is your favorite for your social media. Also at the top is a very easy to understand bar. Uh, you can click on work for My Southern Exposure, advertise, and also see the previous shows. So pretty much that's it. Thank you all. I hope you all have a good night.